Hey, hi YouTube, Mr. Use Boss here, and I've been lucky enough to get my hands on the brand new OnePlus One, and it's amazing. So in this video, I'm just going to be doing some gaming tests to show you how it performs in real life scenarios. So the first game we're going to take a look at is Smash Hit. Now this is a really, really popular game, and you're probably all aware of what it is, but I mean, you basically just throw these little marble balls into glass and smash it, and you go as far as you can, reaching various checkpoints. And the game is actually really, really fun. I mean, it's had nearly 10 million downloads, so it really is pretty popular, and um, there's good reason for that. I mean, it looks really great, and as with just about everything on this phone, it runs amazingly. The sound design is also pretty decent, and you know, there's a nice sort of ambience about the game, which you get with very few titles nowadays. Now, the second game is Warcom. I mean, this is like an indie game. It's made by a very small developer, and you can kind of tell. I mean, this is no big-budget modern combat game. But at the same time, it's actually pretty decent, and thanks to the OnePlus One's amazing 1080p display, it actually looks really good. So, I mean, the display is something that I actually want to talk about, and it's kind of halfway in between the Nexus 5's washed out faded colours, and the Galaxy S5's very vibrant, almost overdone saturation. And that results in a screen that is basically pixel perfect. I mean, I literally love the display, I really like the size. And even though it's got a lower pixel density than most 2014 flagships, it's still more than sharp enough and you can't tell the difference. I mean, I think to a certain extent Apple were right when they said you can't really tell anything above 326. Maybe give or take a few, because I mean, you know, those 1080p phones do look a bit better. Anyway, my third game on the list is going to be Beach Buggy Blitz. Now this is like my standard benchmark that I use on every single Android phone that I actually try. And this is one of the three phones I've tried that can actually play this game at full 1080p very smoothly. So that's definitely an achievement in itself and it just goes to show that the OnePlus One is really up there in terms of performance. And this is partly because it's running on CyanogenMod, mod, which is sort of a performance tweak custom ROM. And I mean, you can really tell that it's been optimised pretty well, and we should get future updates as well, but the general usage of the phone and the gaming is all fantastic. So number four is Angry Birds Go, which, although, I mean, it does look amazing, it has had a lot of bad press, firstly because of the unusually low frame rate, and also the, um, you know, the ridiculous in-app purchases. I mean, some of them have gone for as much as $100 per item, which is... It's really mad, and I can, you know, I can guarantee that people have bought them at that price, and I really disapprove of it, but that's how they made their money. Anyway, the game on the OnePlus One actually runs pretty good, but not amazing. I mean, this is probably more the game's fault than the OnePlus One itself, but it it does stutter a bit. I mean, it's generally a smooth 30, with drops to about 20 frames per second, but you have to consider that there are large draw distances, quite complex models, and some really technical lighting, so I suppose there's a reason for the low frame rate. The game's soundtrack is kind of nice and cheery, and yeah, it does the job, it's not amazing though. So the last game on my list is Sonic Rush. Now I really do actually like the game premise of this game, and it does feel a lot like a Sonic game. However, you know, it shoves video ads after every single go in your face, and you know, I don't really like the fact that it's also full of in-app purchases. However, on this device, it runs flawlessly, there's yet to be a single frame rate drop, and it looks gorgeous. If you're considering the OnePlus One for a gaming phone, then there's another two things that will make it very, very worth it. The first one is it's got physical keys, i.e. not capacitor buttons on the screen, which means you get even more screen real estate, and full screen immersive mode on every single game, not just the ones that specifically support it. Also, the speakers are really, really loud and pretty clear. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.